Good afternoon. This is Graham W. Cox of the law firm Little White Johnson and Cox, legal counsel for Doonstief Enterprises. It has been brought to our attention that the hosts made an incorrect statement in the previous episode when they said that Bob the Builder was an Australian program like the Wiggles. We issue this correction and apologize for any offense taken. Clearly, the Wiggles are British not Australian. I suggest you refrain from listening to Big and Rish, lest more egregious errors be made. Thank you. I only have an hour and two minutes on my recorder. Should I delete something? Or can we keep it to an hour? What What do you think? No, you're fine. Come on, mind. I don't want to keep you up too late either. We can always come back and do a third one of these. Okay, three, two, one. Bob the Builder. Can we fix it? Bob the Builder. Yes, we can. Scoop, look, and busy. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. This is another episode of That Gets My Goat. Here on my left side is... Richard Field. Asking that musicalist of questions. Can you... Fix it. <laughs> That's right. We're back with part two of Can We Fix It? Yes, we can, or maybe we can't. I don't know. It just depends. We talked Star Wars. We talked Ghostbusters. We talked Transformers. Did we talk any other franchises in our last episode? Or was that all? Indiana Jones. Ah, yes. I knew there was one more. Indiana Jones. So last time we went through those four franchises. Can you fix can them? Maybe? Sometimes? Yes? No? Okay, we're going to we're going to move on to some other franchises in film dumb. <laughs> I can't do that. Not after complaining about fandom. In the film industry, there are many th- these days franchises is where it's at. And some are more successful than others and there's probably more than what we have here that we're going to talk about today that we could talk about. But uh, I just wrote a, a list of a few down, and I think Rish wrote a list of a few down. We made it through some of them last time, now we're moving on. Uh, the first one that I want to talk about today is the DC Comics Extended Universe. Is that what they call it? DCEU? That's what they call it. We can call it whatever you want. Okay. So the DCEU. <laughs> That is not a mouthful at all, which includes, you know, all the various characters of the DC universe. Back in the day, you know, Superman came out and it was just Superman in the Superman movies. You didn't get Batman included. You didn't get Aquaman. You didn't get Wonder Woman, etc., etc. They had the Wonder Woman TV show. You didn't get the other characters. They had the Batman movies with Michael Keaton and you didn't get the other characters outside of just the Batman mythos but now they're trying to weave them all together and they started with a big stumble out the gate Man of Steel that was supposed to be like our introduction to what was going to be the DC extended universe I think they were jealous I guess of Marvel and they wanted to have the Marvel cinematic universe And so they tried to rush into it. And so immediately after making The Man of Steel, they went straight into Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. I think this was supposed to be some kind of intro to the Justice League, but they basically had the Justice League appear in it, right? Oh, was it just Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman? I never saw it because I was not interested. There was a scene showing like Bruce Wayne's his archive footage or whatever that there were other metahumans on the the planet okay. and that he was going to he was planning on an Avengers initiative and that's where we first saw Momoa as uh, Aquaman and that's where I believe we first saw Ezra Miller as the Flash 
you know, just the, the tiny little cameos as like hints of what was to come. Uh huh. But yeah, that was what Dawn of Justice, I think, was was winking at was you know Justice League guys. Hey, that's gonna happen. You know that thing they have in Marvel? Oh, we're gonna have something just like it. It's gonna be almost as cool. Anyways, yeah, I mean they with the Man of Steel, they basically butchered Superman. Superman uh, is a certain type of character, and they made Superman a completely different kind of character. And the movie offended you and I so much that we were no longer interested in the DC extended universe. Let's see, we made a few exceptions. We did go and see Wonder Woman. We did go and see the Suicide mm-hmm. Squad. H- have you seen anything else? I don't I don't think I've seen any I, others. Yeah. I, I I saw Aquaman. Okay, you saw Aquaman? I did. My line in the sand was I would not support that version of Superman. So anything that had that in it and it's just I uh, Dude, it takes a real accomplishment to get Superman that wrong. People, you know, complain about Superman 3 and Superman 4, but uh, that Man of Steel, dude, that that was intentional. And that's what really sucked about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? They were trying to Dark Knight Superman. They were like, oh, Chris Nolan makes lots and lots of money with his movies. We got to make them like that. And Superman is not the Dark Knight. So, with all of that said, can you fix it? Can we fix it? I, I don't know. There's a reason that those characters have been around for 75, 80 years. People love them, loved them before we were born and will continue to love them after we are gone. So, yeah, for the world at large, I feel like, you know, you bring back Superman in four or five years with a different actor and a different take on the character, and I think that people will be fine with it. But I'm not sure if you're asking if I will go back. That's a hard question to answer. Yeah, I don't know if I'm asking whether you can go back. Because Justice League came out... And that should have been a gazillion dollar film. That Justice League should have been an Avengers or Force Awakens. You know, something like that. Where it's just like, oh my gosh, that made so much money. And it's the least successful film in the whole franchise. Less successful than Suicide Squad. Oh gosh. You know what I mean? It's just like, how do you get it that wrong? There have to be other people that feel the way that we felt. For, for nobody to go see that movie. Right. Right? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. A movie that has... And it was the same year as Wonder Woman was packing them in and making people stand up and saying, yay, I believe in Themyscira and all that. And and for them to say, uh, nope. <laughs> now we'll just put in the DVD of Wonder Woman again at home. That was a statement. And so, yeah, I I don't... I don't know. There, there are people out there that may stay away in droves, but they didn't stay away from Aquaman, <laughs> despite the way that I've been pronouncing it. Despite the way the bare naked ladies pronounce it. Yeah. Th- see, the thing about this, from what I understand, anyways, of the DC EU, uh, it's imploding as we speak. I believe. Henry Cavill is out as Superman. I, I'm not certain, but I saw I, I, at work they play Entertainment Tonight every day right after our news. So I wind up I, I despise the show greatly, but I wind up hearing some of the crap that they talk about. And here and there, they're talking about something I care about. When you know they're not talking about what dress Katy Perry wore to the Grammys or whatever. Um, sometimes they're actually doing news about movies and they did talk about Henry Cavill and his possible end of his Superman run. And just the other day, I thought I heard that 
Ben Affleck will no longer be playing Batman in those movies as well. Yeah, they announced when The Batman is coming out, which is the Matt Reeves solo Batman movie that should have come and gone already. I mean, it's been delayed that much. Well, it was uh, and, originally and supposed to be directed by Ben Affleck, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. he was going to star and direct, and then he dropped out. Matt Reeves came on board to direct. And now, yeah, Affleck is not involved in any way. And so what happens when that movie comes out? What happens when the first trailer comes out? Applause? Yawns? <laughs> eye rolls? I just, I don't... When everybody sees that it isn't Ben Affleck, then they applaud? <laughs> I guess, but was Ben Affleck the thing that was wrong with that? Uh... <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so, but uh, that's the thing. And, and we've talked about it a bunch of times on That Gets My Goat. So if you've been listening to the show, this is nothing new to you. But the biggest thing that those, that the movies from DC were missing the most was fun. They just were so dark and dour and sad. And, they, you know, they tried here and there to lighten it up with some of them. And the ones that did the best at that, like Wonder Woman, and doesn't Aquaman have a, a lot of uh, lighthearted stuff? It does. So, you know, in those two movies have done very well. And <sighs> Suicide Squad... Uh, it feels to me like... It, dude, it had Harley Quinn. Yeah, it had Harley Quinn in it, played by Margot Robbie, which is enough to pack the seats. But it had that trailer that came out with all the songs and all that stuff. And something about that really got people interested in the show. And I think a lot of what it... A lot of the money it made was due to that, to tell you the truth. Because it wasn't very good and it wasn't the worst thing ever but it wasn't very good it uh, wasn't particularly funny aside from harley quinn harley quinn was really good in it everybody else it was a little lacking and i think because of that it didn't do as well as maybe it could have but i don't even know what it was doing there what it didn't belong why did they ever make a Suicide Squad to begin with? How did that one come out? As What was that, like the third movie? Third movie. It was the same year as Batman v Superman. Why? That just doesn't make any sense. That's like Marvel Cinematic Universe doing like Iron Man and then, okay, we'll do Guardians of the Galaxy next. What? Why don't you give yourself a little bit of a track record before you try and pull something like that? Anyways... Yeah, I think that could be a start, you know? I mean, we're throwing out the things that you and I found. The the I assume, since we're getting a new Superman, that we're going to hopefully get a new take on Superman. He's not just going to drop in and be the same old dour guy that lets his dad die trying to save a dog. Instead of revealing his powers. Really, that's all it would take. I, I love Superman. Ever since I saw those movies as a kid. And I, I suppose probably even before that. I'm sure when I saw cartoons and stuff like that for that. But, you know, I remember those movies so fondly that Christopher Reeve was in. You know, he was, he is Superman. And if they can get as close to that as they can then they've done it right. And Batman, they can do... I'm not a huge fan of Batman, so I really don't care. I liked the Christopher Nolan movies. You know, they were fine. You know, they can do Batman however they want, as long as Superman's right. And and, and it's, you know, something that you enjoy going to see. I think that's really all it would take. They've had it, you know, a couple of hits, a couple misses. I'd like them to keep Gal Gadot or Gadot or however you say it. I've heard it said both ways, which is one of them's got to be wrong. I'm not a big fan of the the shaggy long hair Aquaman. I don't know why. I guess it's just because I knew Aquaman from the Super Friends and he should look like that. Hmm. What do you think of that? 
Well, yeah, I'm, I'm not... A, I mean, he's all covered in tattoos, too. But, see, I've always been a bigger Rob Zombie fan than you are, and so... Uh, <laughs> so you're fine with Aquaman uh, coming out to Dragula? <laughs> <laughs> if, yeah, if they were going to reboot Aquaman at some point, and of course they will, unless I pass away soon, we will see everything rebooted, because that's all Hollywood can do. But I would hope that they don't do the long-haired, multi-tattooed Aquaman the next time. It would be fun to see them try and do a more super heroic looking version, but I guess... Do you want to have him do Arthur Drogo? (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, no, that movie was fun. I mean, unless you're adapting The Watchmen, comic book movies should have a sense of fun. And, you know, as, as bleak as Infinity War ended... There were still moments where you laughed in that movie, and it was neat to see characters together, you know, that had never been together, and and Rocket Raccoon was... There there needs to be some kind of balance. We go to movies most of the time for entertainment, for fun, and so, yeah, I guess that's probably why Aquaman's doing so well. I mean, it's also really big on spectacle, but I, sometimes I scratch my head. I, I don't think it was a great movie, but it was good. It was good enough, and it was fun, and maybe that's all people want from these things. Because, uh, you know, Man of Steel was not a good movie. And then, you know, its, it's take on Superman, you know, was, it was just wrong. It was wrong-headed. It was... Somebody in a position of authority saying, you know, Superman Returns only made a a huge amount of money. It should have made a gargantuan amount of money. Do not make Superman Returns. Yeah. I wonder, too, if, uh, like, Batman and... Or, sorry. I wonder, too, if Aquaman and Wonder Woman get a little more leeway because people are less familiar with their mythos than they are with Superman or Batman. There's a crap ton of really big fans of those characters out there, and you mess them up, and they're going to be angry, but I would say there's a lot less of really big fans of Aquaman and Wonder Woman out there. Okay. Much more so (laughs) Aquaman than Wonder Woman. I'm sure she's got a pretty large amount, but Aquaman's... A relatively minor character. I'm really interested to see uh, how Shazam turns out. That's coming out really soon. And uh, I look forward to that one. That one is probably the one that I'm most excited about from this entire run of the DC Comics universe. This is the first one where I'm I'm probably going to be there, you know, the day of. Ever since Superman, uh, Man of Steel came out. You know, I think we went and saw that opening weekend. Well, we saw Wonder Woman opening day. Oh, okay. Yeah, despite it being your too. final day at work, and <laughs> <laughs> but maybe that was had something to do with it. You know, you were going out of, you were moving away, and so we had to see it then. But uh, yeah, but you're really excited about Shazam, huh? I, 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 I am. It looks fun. And yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Fun. And I love, I love the idea of Shazam. It's a completely different thing than any other superhero. This is a little kid that becomes a superhero. And that's, you know, it lends itself to all sorts of interesting story possibilities. And yeah, it also should be fun. And I hope that it is. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to it. The The trailers that I've seen looks fun. So... Uh, I'd like to see that movie and see if it really turns out. Maybe that's all I need is just some more fun. Maybe I just need a Shazam movie to fix it. Uh, But, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm more willing to go see those movies than anything with Superman or Batman. So, can they fix them? I don't know. Yeah, I think they've got to show us now. Maybe (laughs) maybe all it would take, and I I talked about this on the show before, maybe all it would take is getting that damn John Williams music back in there. When they played that for Superman Returns on the trailer, I I got chills when I heard that on the commercial, and I'm just like, I gotta go see that movie. Because seeing somebody flying around 
And hearing that music, wow, that was really all it took. And they made a point to not use the John Williams music in these new ones. That should have been clue number one. (laughs) Why would you not do that unless you were planning on completely fucking it up? Okay, well, we'll see how well Shazam does. I think they've been emboldened a little bit because Aquaman did so well. They are currently making a Harley Quinn starring vehicle and, you know, the Batman and Wonder Woman 1984, which is the sequel to Wonder Woman. All of those are are coming. And if Shazam does well, then we will see many, many more, I would think. Isn't there a Joker movie that's out there, too? Yeah, yeah, there is. I'd forgotten about it because uh, it still feels like a prank. It feels like a trailer that was made for (laughs) April Fool's Day or something. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, that's a weird thing about DC. They're making a Harley Quinn movie. Harley Quinn's a bad guy. They made the Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad are bad guys. They're making a Joker movie. Joker's a bad guy. Why are the bad guys so front and center? Are their good guys too boring? I don't know. I mean, I guess they made Venom and Venom did all right, right? It did really well. I mean, it still surprises me. So maybe they figured they're good to go. If Venom can do fine, then so can the Joker and all the rest. But it just doesn't make sense. They've got plenty of characters that people know and love. They still haven't breached Green Lantern. He wasn't even in the Justice League movie, was he? No. Why have they just, are they waiting for Ryan Reynolds to come back? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, is that, that one's not on your list, is it? No. He's just, inclu- he's included in DC Comics. Okay, well, let's talk about it, dude. The Green Lantern, can you fix it? Because I think if they announced right now, today, Michael B. Jordan as Jon Stewart in Green Lantern Rebirth, or whatever you want to call it, Green Lantern colon something, with Ryan Reynolds as Hal Jordan, you know, passing the ring, passing the torch to this new lantern, I think people would be like, oh, that that's cool. I don't know that people would be like, oh, thank God, finally, we've been waiting. But I, I, I don't know that there would be unanimous hate for that just because enough time has passed. Mm -hmm. And I think Ryan Reynolds has, like a whole new generation of Ryan Reynolds fans have been born or made. And uh, look, Green Lantern was a bad movie. Do not get me wrong. (laughs) But it wasn't a bad movie intentionally like Man of Steel was. Right. Right. It just, yeah, it's, it's it's a shame that Green Lantern wasn't better, and it's a shame that it cost so damn much, because it, it did all right, box office-wise. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I if I were DC, I would get somebody else to play Green Lantern, and, and you probably want to go for the Jon Stewart Green Lantern, because that will seem new, but I, I think people would go. Yeah, I don't I don't think they even necessarily have to bring Ryan Reynolds back and connect it to the old one. They can just pretend that that one didn't exist and let it quietly fade away into history and just here's a new Green Lantern. You know, do it like they did the Incredible Hulk except for better. Just bring him back. I'm surprised that you know, I just realized that why didn't they include him in the Justice League? I guess they had, well, what's his face? The uh, cyborg. D- did they have a Martian Manhunter? Not as far as I know. Okay. They have Martian Manhunter in like the TV show though, don't they? Like Supergirl On or something Supergirl, like that? Supergirl, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that Green Lantern is easily salvageable. I, I think most people have pretty much forgotten about that old one and won't care if they try again with Jon Stewart or... Kyle Rayner. It's Kyle Rayner, right? Yeah. Kyle Rayner, Guy Gardner. I, I don't know that you... <laughs> oh, just not Guy Gardner. That guy's bowl cut was the worst. His hair is really terrible, but I'm sure there is an actor out there <laughs> that could make it work. <laughs> All right. So another thing on my list. And now this thing here is really dear to my heart. 
And it had a run and has completely just disappeared, just gone away. But from what I understand, I think they're actually coming back with something else. And the, the property I'm talking about is another 80s hit. G.I. Joe uh, was a big deal in the 80s, cartoon-wise. They tried to make some films of it uh, within the past 10 years. When did the, 2000, the the first one come out? Do you remember? I don't. Let's say it was 2008. I don't know. It was made after okay. Transformers did so well. So 2008 or 2009 is my guess, but I, I, I don't know. Yeah. 2008, 2009, something like that. And then it looked like it was dead. And then somebody resurrected it. Some director who, do you know the director, right? Uh, I, uh, of the second one? It's, uh, he's Asian, right? All I remember is that he did something else and it did really well. And they said, well, you can do anything then. And he said, okay, well, I want to do G.I. Joe. And they're like, uh, okay. <laughs> and so he did G.I. Joe Retaliation, I think the second one was called. And the funny thing is, with both of those movies, I didn't hate them. I didn't dislike them. They were, yeah, they were so-so. I think what they really lacked was a lot of character and character development. The second one was better on that front. The first one was really kind of faceless, Michael Bay-esque. And there was a lot of silliness, but that didn't bother me very much because G.I. Joe was always kind of that way, you know? Like, the end of the movie, they had a big battle that took place at a secret Cobra base that's built on the bottom of an iceberg and they were flying around in submarines and shooting at each other. And that just sounded exactly like G.I. Joe to me. You know, G.I. Joe was always about going to, you know, the polar ice caps to get the crystals to make the mass device run or some crap like that. And I liked it. And then the second one, again, it was not amazing. But I still liked it. I Shoot, it had The Rock in it. And I liked it. <laughs> and he's one of your deal he's breakers. He's one of my deal breakers. And I like. I probably wouldn't have seen it. The funny thing was, <laughs> I used to do this all the time. I had this issue where here and there I would have to change my schedule up because somebody was taking like a day off of work. And my schedule was always the easiest one to just shift. And so somebody had taken the day off and I was supposed to come in later in the day and I forgot. And so I showed up at work at my normal time, like 10 a.m. And everybody looked at me like, what are you doing here? And I went and looked at the schedule and they're like, yeah, you're not on the schedule. You're not supposed to be here until like two. And I went, oh, damn it. But I lived 45 minutes away from work. So driving all the way back home. And then driving all the way back was a huge waste of time. So I decided, well, shoot, maybe I can go see a movie. So I drove to the nearest movie theater and they had a showing of G.I. Joe Retaliation. And so I went and saw that and then went back to work. And yeah, I, it was much better than just driving home, sitting there for a couple hours and driving back. So I enjoyed it at the time. And G.I. Joe is a toy line first and foremost. You know, it was a toy line supported by a cartoon then with these movies you know they made toys of the movie characters and it was a toy line supported by a movie but the movies i guess didn't do well enough maybe they cost too much i'm not sure what it was but they didn't live up to people's expectations or something and so they didn't make a gi joe 3 and it went away and now the toy line has gone away I guess it went all the way down to the point where they, it was like a subscription service kind of a thing. Like you sign up to subscribe to G.I. Joe and every now and then they would put some figures out and you just got them in the mail, which is, I guess that's a common thing now with toys. I'm kind of blown away by the fact that that's how people get toys, but uh, that's a, a regular thing. People don't go to stores anymore. That's for old people like you and I, but um yeah, even that is ending. The subscription service has gone away. They're down to their very last figures and they're shutting it down and they're done and there's no G.I. Joe. It's nowhere to be found. Not on TV, not on 
Movies, not in toys, not in. But can we fix it? Can we fix it? Well, I didn't see either of them, and it was because of the Michael Bay Transformers movie. The, the whole ad campaign for the G.I. Joe movie, even though it was Stephen Summers who had done the 1999 Mummy, and I really liked that movie, even though it was him, the whole ad campaign was, you know, from the studio that brought you Transformers. You know, if you liked transform, and I was just like, oh, geez. And I, I don't regret not seeing it. I could have seen it at any point, and I just didn't. And I was always much more of a Transformers fan than a G.I. Joe fan, but it, that's no excuse. I just, I, I guess I'm not the target audience. I, those movies, you know, they make a Mission Impossible movie every couple of years, and they should be making G.I. Joe movies every couple of years, too. The, they're, they're episodic adventure movies, like James Bond or like Mission Impossible. And maybe you're right, maybe they are just too expensive. But, yeah, it's too bad that those didn't, didn't take yeah. off more. Right. Because there's a zillion characters, too, you could bring in uh, that, that haven't been covered. And, you know, this movie could focus on Flint. And this movie could focus on Scarlet. And this movie could focus on, you know, Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. And, and, and yet they're gone, just like the toys. Yeah, G.I. Joe's world might be a little too kooky. I think that might be the problem is just this idea of a force. Or I, I think the real problem is this super costumed, crazy hooded Cobra Commander with his crimson guard and Destro with his silver mask and all of that kind of stuff, I think might be, you know, the the terrorist organization bent on world conquest. Uh, that might be too much. Although it doesn't seem to me like it should be. You know what I mean? I mean, A, there's ISIS, there's the Taliban, there's Al-Qaeda out there. There's plenty of examples of a terrorist organization bent on world conquest that you would think that that should resonate with today's audiences people should be like oh yeah i've heard of that yeah maybe it's just that they're too weird they're not they're too superhero feeling although again superhero movies are everywhere but maybe it's the superhero costumes minus the superpowers that's the problem. I don't know. I do know that there is a movie that is supposedly being called Snake Eyes that is in some stage of production. And uh, I assume because it's called Snake Eyes that it's focused on Snake Eyes. It's the story of snake eyes life or something i don't know snake eyes goes to vietnam although i assume now he probably will go to afghanistan and he gets injured and now he can't speak and his face is ghastly so he has to cover it and he becomes the ninja i assume probably storm shadow will be included in it and you know you'll have the the soft master and the hard master or whatever i don't know if that's gonna fix it if that's gonna save it if that's gonna bring it back i hope so I love G.I. Joe. It was probably my favorite toy line growing up. I liked Star Wars a lot, but they kind of went away, you know, relatively early on in my life. You know, they, they had Return of the Jedi, but then there was nothing more. And so Star Wars disappeared. There was Transformers. But Transformers, I don't know what the deal was with that. I moved on from Transformers to G.I. Joe. And I kind of stuck with that until the end when I finally, you know, went to high school and kind of stopped playing with toys and all that kind of stuff. And uh, bums me out that there's not G.I. Joes anymore. You know, I collect toys. I get them all the time. And there's no, my that's my favorite stuff. And there's nothing out there to get. Uh, I guess I could always just go back and collect classic stuff and spend the money for the vintage stuff. But I'd like to see new... Because like these days, they make really cool, really realistic, awesome toys. It would be neat to uh, to see that as well. You know, I'm down with the, the... The vintage stuff is always there, but to see new stuff coming would be cool too. 
And uh, it seems like that's not going to happen without some kind of a presence in media. Heck, I'd be happy if they just made a G.I. Joe cartoon again. That would be enough. Yeah, we're in an era where they're making new She-Ra cartoons, new Masters of the Universe cartoons. Right. Shitloads of Transformers and Turtles and things like that. I, I, yeah, it would be a, a natural to do a new yeah. G.I. Joe. Yeah, doesn't Netflix or Hulu or somebody make a G.I. Joe cartoon? I'd sit down with my kid and watch it. I'd force him. I'd tie him the frick down if I had to. <laughs> all right, so we're, we're going to move on from G.I. Joe. This one, I'm going to leave all the way up to you because I'm really unfamiliar with it. But it's one of those properties that they keep trying to resurrect. They want to make it into uh, entertainment juggernaut, and it just keeps resisting their efforts. The Terminator. Terminator did really good. It was a surprise indie hit in the 80s. Then the Terminator 2 was a huge blockbuster in the 90s. Uh, Pretty much ever since then, they've been trying to get it to be something. And it just is not getting there. Is the the Terminator an idea that can be fixed, can be saved, can be a franchise? Or were they done with Terminator 2? You know, it's really hard to answer that question. Because the first movie was just this wonderful awesome thing and then they made a sequel which was really sort of just a remake of the first movie with a huge budget and tons of imagination and then they made a third movie which was a remake (laughs) of the second movie and yeah i guess that's one way of making movies and they you know they made a fourth one and they decided to go a different way to make something very different and audiences didn't respond to that. And so they decided, well, we'll make a fifth one. And the fifth one is like a time travel greatest hits. You know, we're going to revisit the earlier movies kind of thing. That, that made even less money. It's just like people did not respond to that either. I don't know. I don't know. There was that TV show too. Yeah, there was the Sarah Connor Chronicles, which was, you know, much more what the first movie was. You know, like, let's talk about robots from the future coming back to kill Sarah and, and John. You know, it, I, I, I felt like there was some really good stuff on that sh- series, but maybe I just really like the Terminator. I, I have seen all of it. And the only one I didn't like was the third one. And yeah, now it's been long enough. Gosh, if you want to feel old, Terminator was so long ago that the rights have reverted to James Cameron which eventually everything will happen. If you let something go long enough, the original creator gets the rights back. And he's got, I think he just announced what the title was going to be of this next Terminator. It's got fate in the title. It would be cool if they called it No Fate. Duel of the Fates. Kill for me. So apparently the next movie is going to be called... Terminator colon Dark Fate, and uh, Cameron is producing Not it. Fate of the Fallen. Fate of the <laughs> Fallen. Ooh, I like that. But I don't know. They, they had so many different ways they wanted to take that franchise and never did. Terminator Salvation was supposed to be the start of a new trilogy, and it didn't work. And Genesis was supposed to be the start of a new trilogy, and it didn't work. And so they just gave up and let uh, James Cameron have it back, huh? Well, no, it's, it's copyright reversion, which is the thing. Is uh, It takes 35 years, and then you get your copyright oh, back. Oh, okay. And so it's if you can believe it, it's been 35 years. So it's not later. one of those things where like they failed to exercise the option. It's uh, a different thing than that. Right. It's, it's sort of a, 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 a recent decision. Uh, that the original creator gets his uh, his copyright back. And we'll see if he can bring some magic to it. I, I, I didn't like Terminator 3, mostly because it played it so safe and it had the potential to be something really good. And instead, it was just Terminator 2 light. And I know that Cameron had had ideas for a third Terminator movie, but you know how he is. He takes forever to make a movie. <laughs> and so uh, they well, I went I don't know ahead. why you think that. Avatar 2 was great. 
(laughs) (laughs) It's possible that he has enough love for the franchise and enough good ideas in him still that it will be worth going to see that next movie. But um, will audiences care anymore? Will audiences go? I I don't know. I don't know. The, The director of the new Terminator is Tim Miller, who did Deadpool. So it's not like they're skimping. It's it's a big shot director. And the writer is David Goyer. Right. He worked on the Dark Knight trilogy. And it comes out this year. Really? I didn't know it came out this year. Huh. Interesting. So anyhow, uh, we will, yeah, we'll we will see, see soon, uh, I guess. <laughs> that first trailer soon, I would think. And if it looks fun and interesting and exciting and new... I think the newness has to right. It, it it has to feel like it's offering something that the others didn't. And if so, yes, I think you can fix it. But let me just say this: thank goodness they didn't just remake Terminator, though. Right. Because I would have nothing to do with that if they were just going to remake. They Terminator. probably will soon enough. Well, sure. Yeah, if this doesn't Kids work, kids can't be expected to watch an old movie. That's just asking too much. That's why they're doing live action Aladdin, because you can't ask a kid to watch a cartoon from the 90s. Come on. That's, uh, that's it's like freaking child abuse, man. You can, you can get taken up on charges for that. Okay, so let's let's move on. I know you don't have a lot of space left on your card that you've got recording this stuff. So let's try and do these a little faster now. I've got a few other ones, and then they're ones that we care less about. Ninja Turtles. They had two Ninja Turtle Michael Bay movies, right? Yeah, I mean, he didn't direct them, but yeah. his fingers were all over those. They were, like you were saying, from the studio that brought you the Transformers. And it's got Megan Fox again, too, so you know you're going to like it. I really wanted April O'Neil to at least be like a redhead. So, I mean, I don't care about Ninja Turtles. I think I've said this before. They came out after I had moved on. They were for kids. They don't interest me at all. They're not my thing. I know that people that are younger than I am love them. People that are younger than I am love freaking Power Rangers too. But we're not going to talk about Power Rangers. We're talking about Ninja Turtles. Is is it a franchise that can be fixed? Are they done with those two movies that they did? They didn't make any more. It's been a while. Are they going to try and reboot it with somebody not Michael Bay? So that my biggest gripe about those Michael Bay movies was, again, just like they did with the Transformers, they it's like they went out of their way to make the turtles ugly, creepy, awful, instead of looking like the Ninja Turtles did. That was enough to keep me away, although it would have been hard to get me to go to a Ninja Turtles movie anyways. Do you think there's something they can do about Ninja Turtles? Well, their movie's made for kids, and there's always going to be new kids born. And so, for a lot of children whatever the next one will be <laughs> will be their first exposure to this concept and so maybe they'll love it i just i i re- i knew that the next one was going to be a reboot but what i didn't realize was that P- paramount is keeping michael bay uh. as a producer of this next reboot that then why not just keep making his series of turtle movies I, just that's so strange is it paramount that we just need to get things away from they did the transformers right they did gi joe they did gi joe i i have no answer for you man I, uh, paramount the, is the ones doing the top gun sequel also <laughs> <laughs> okay Will that succeed? I know that's not what we're talking about, but is there any chance that people will be like, oh, yeah, with Top Gun 2? <laughs> I don't see it being a, a worthwhile endeavor, but pff, what do I know? I think Top Gun was as much for girls as it was for boys, or possibly more so. So it could be freaking like, titanic where you know girls go and see that five times because it totally appeals to them i don't know i so what you're saying with ninja turtles is 
that they are already in the process of rebooting it, but they don't seem to have learned their lesson. <laughs> that seems to be a running theme with these things. Okay. Because turtles are for kids, I I think yeah, you can fix it. You can do you can keep doing it and doing it. They do car- cartoons all the time of of the Ninja Turtles. Yeah, oh, and the the new one that's on Nickelodeon right now is so ugly, dude. So <laughs> so ugly. But it's not for me. It's never been for me and so the kids are forgiving and yeah, there's no way they would get me to go to one of these, I'm sure. But yeah. They don't care. All right. Okay, here's the next one. We did a, uh, an entire episode of That Gets My Goat on the go about this movie because I saw it for the first time. I was probably already 40 years old by the time I saw this thing. I don't know. I was, I was old. And I watched it and I was like, what the fuck? Why do people like this shit so much? And my conclusion was, it's a great idea. The concept is awesome. The execution has never been there. And that is the Highlander. Can Is there something that someone can do with the Highlander? Um, I, you know, I don't know. They've been trying forever to bring back the Highlander franchise. Ryan Reynolds was going to play Connor McCloud for a long, long time. I remember, gosh, who was it? Uh, uh, Drax the Destroyer. Dave Bautista was going to be the Kurgan. I, I believe they wanted Tom Cruise to be Sean Connery's part of Ramirez, which is just so strange. <laughs> Tom Cruise in that part? Shouldn't they get like Antonio Banderas or something and actually make it a Spaniard this time instead of a something completely <laughs> wrong? <laughs> but they've really, really been trying because somebody somewhere believes in this franchise. Um and it's hard to believe that it's a franchise, but, you know, there were two television series. There were an animated series. There was an there animated series? Six movies. About a guy who cuts someone's head off? Well, I'm, it, it, would have it to... was, they pulled their punches a lot more, you know. They they never actually got to. <laughs> they, they, they would draw their swords and then punch a guy or kick a guy in the face. <laughs> it was like the Ninja Turtles as they pull out their swords and then kick people instead. That's what I was referring to. Yeah, they pull out their nunchucks and then kick somebody. Yeah, okay. See, the Highlander is something I would like to see done right. I would love to see even a remake, uh, but a, a good remake. You know, not a faithful remake. Because <laughs> it's a great concept. But in my personal opinion, and this is what I knew the Highlander from before I ever saw that first movie, was the TV show that was on was on the, whatever the network that had uh, Xena the Warrior Princess and and uh, yeah, that was just sold into syndication. Oh, okay, so it was just whatever. It was whatever channel would want. It was one it, of those yeah. deep cable networks that had it, and I had my stepmom's grandson, which would be my step nephew my step nephew lived with us for a while and he would constantly watch that show and then what was there was a show with uh lorenzo lamas yeah it was one word it was like renegade yeah something like i don't know but those shows played back to back and he would watch those every freaking day (laughs) they were terrible uh but they weren't terrible, terrible. That was actually, I think, probably the best version of the Highlander that I ever saw. And it was a different McLeod, Duncan McLeod, I want to say, instead of Connor McLeod. But he was still, oh, the clan McLeod. I'm Duncan McLeod. And he would announce that in every show. And he would fight somebody and cut their head off. And it was pretty good. Uh, you know, it was a TV show, so it wasn't amazing. But it was way better than the movies ever were. And uh, they shouldn't have been better than the movies were. Um, I guess there was no Sean Connery, though. So there is that. Not even a fake Sean Connery showed up for that. (laughs) All right. So that's the Highlander. Uh, Here's a couple more quickies. John Carter of Mars. Is there something they can do to bring back to make it a thing? Uh, John Carter of Mars got a movie like eight, ten years ago. It was Andrew Stanton, I think, from uh, Pixar that directed it. 
was his first his live action directorial debut. Yeah. Disney, they went all for it. They, you know, pumped it up like it was going to be the next big thing, except for they were afraid of the title. They just called it John Carter in the end, which was the crappiest title ever. They couldn't call it Princess of Mars because women wouldn't go see a movie with the word Mars in it. Men wouldn't go see a movie with the word princess in it. (laughs) And so nobody would go see the movie if it was called Princess of Mars. What if women would go see it because it had the word princess in it and men would go see it because it had Mars and everyone would go see it? Had they considered that? But anyways, do you think there's a way to make John Carter... A viable property? Is space fantasy, including John Carter, a thing that could be? Or is it a thing that should not be? <laughs> um, dude, I don't... I don't think so. Yeah. It had its one they, shot. It costs so much to do John Carter of Mars, the Disney one. And they, they really believed in it, even if they didn't believe in the title. Enough to put that much money into it. And I don't know that a movie based on that source material was ever going to make enough money to pay for that movie. I thought the movie was great. I've talked to a bunch of people that was like, oh yeah, that movie looked like it would be terrible, but it was actually pretty good. I think it was well beyond pretty good. So you're not going to get a better adaptation of Princess of Mars. It's just, yeah, sorry, it's not going to work. You can do that in animation. If you could afford to do it on HBO or do it on, you know, Disney Plus as a TV series, but it's going to be so special effects intensive because half the characters are not human. I I, I don't think it's doable. Can't have uh, the six-legged green guys without breaking the budget, I guess. I was trying to think of what their names were, but it's not coming to me. I mean, Deja Thoris can just be red makeup, but the rest are tough. Okay, that's fine. It's not one of those properties that people hunger for. It's kind of a surprise that it ever made it to movies at all. It's it's an old property uh, like Tarzan and like uh, Sherlock Holmes. And Tarzan and Sherlock Holmes keep coming up. John Carter of Mars, not so much. Yeah. And poor, uh, poor Andrew Stanton. He was one of the great directors of the 21st century. One of the people who was just like, yeah, I will go see anything that guy makes. And now he's completely forgotten. He, he made Finding Dory. And that's it. That's it. He's done. And it just, it breaks my heart, dude. That guy should have been doing Star Wars sequels. Yeah, he would have done a good job. But it didn't happen. Okay, moving on in the lightning round. Uh, The next uh, thing up is the Universal Monsters. They did a Tom Cruise mummy movie a few years ago that was supposed to be the launch of the Universal Monsters cinematic universe. Yeah, they called it the Dark Universe. And instead of that, it was the crash landing of the Universal Monsters Cinematic Universe. Nobody saw the movie. Nobody cared. Nobody was interested. And it didn't go anywhere. Are Universal Monsters something that people would watch? Did they just do it completely wrong with that mummy movie? Yes and yes. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, they absolutely went at that I mean, Universe, they're not an adventure franchise. They're a horror franchise. They're supposed to be scary, right? They're supposed to be, but that 1999 Mummy, instead of being a remake of The Mummy, they said, let's do an Indiana Jones meets The Mummy kind of thing. And it worked great. Right. The idea of, you know, supernatural monsters and, a you know, a swashbuckling period adventure tale that movie was so much fun. And so I guess they thought, well, we'll do one in the modern day with that same sensibility. And they, But it, there was nothing in that movie that was worth recommending. There was nothing special. It was boring. And it was so expensive. And that's, that's your biggest sin in starting out this franchise. You know, the movie had to make X number of dollars to make it be worth making. 
And, and they blew their load in the first movie. You, you No, you should have done a Jekyll and Hyde movie or a Frankenstein movie or a Dracula movie or something in your as your first attempt that you made on a responsible budget. An Invisible Man movie, you know, something like that. And, and you could build to something that's going to cost a lot of money, that's going to have a lot of special effects. You could build towards a wolfman or a, a creature from the Black Lagoon. And instead, you know, they, they spent all that money and they made a movie that sucked. Dude, it was not... I, I wouldn't recommend that movie to anybody. But having said that, for them to just throw out their plans and say, oh, hey, that Angelina Jolie... Bride of Frankenstein movie that we had a release date for? Never mind. We won't make that. Like, oh, hey, Johnny Depp as the Invisible Man. I know we have pictures of him as the Invisible Man. We're not going to make that. That's just stupid, dude. How can you have pictures of the Invisible Man? Why do I continue to do a podcast with you? <laughs> That's the question we need to do an episode about. Yeah, can you fix the Dune, Steve? <laughs> no, you can't. It's a shame. They, there was so much potential for that. And the real shame is that they're just like, yeah, we're done. Yeah, it's a, it's a bummer. It's too many, so many times the budget has been the big stupid thing that's killed these things. John Carter of Mars, had they done it on half the budget, and I don't know if they could have, if that was possible... They just included less Tharks. I, th I remembered them. They're called Tharks. <laughs> if they did something like that, you know, really pared back the budget, it could have been a hit. You know, it's like last episode when we were talking about Solo. Solo failed. Why? Well, the budget for it was gigantic because they made the damn movie twice. Had they just made one movie and put it out, it would have been rather successful. Instead... You know, it made Titanic look like a low-budget film. And so many times they've done that. And then when they underperform, they don't give it a chance. And I think, you know, they're asking too much of these things by giving them such huge budgets. When, you know, you, you could have a franchise. You know, you had like Underworld, for example, was a franchise that went... How many films did it go? Five? Yeah, I think I saw four. And they made a fifth one that I didn't bother with. Yeah, I mean, and it made enough money to keep going and going. And it wasn't some gigantic runaway hit. It just wasn't as expensive. And so, you know, you don't have to make that much money. You can have a series that goes for years and years if you don't spend so damn much. You have to make so damn much. And yeah, Universal Monsters are not giganto blockbuster story ideas i mean first of all they've been around since you know the 30s the 20s you know they're not something that people are going to just have their socks knocked off by i think that they are due for i all of them are due for uh refreshing uh, they're all due to be refurbished and put back out because yeah i mean nobody's going watching uh Claude Rains play the Invisible Man anymore. You know, I, you've been doing on Facebook your top 10 black and white films ever, you know, sh going through and showing a list. And most people, I bet you ask them to make a list like that, they'd be like, I don't know if I've seen 10 black and white movies. So getting people to, to watch these Universal Monsters movies, not going to happen. But, you know, they're due for, for a good remake. But yeah, they're not due for a Tom Cruise $250 million remake. So I think they could be fixed. I don't know if they will be, but they could be. Okay, this is the last of the lightning round. <laughs> and it's, it's not really all that serious because I don't think anyone's ever going to do anything with it. But Flash Gordon! Oh! Can they fix Flash Gordon? When did it come out? Like 1970? I mean, it was right around the same time as Star Wars. I'm going to say 81 or 82. I'm going to say Oh, are you serious? It was that much later? I, I don't know. We can look it up if you want. Woo! He saved every one of us. Yeah, but I remember seeing that movie. And no, just... you were right. 80. It came out 
December 5th, 1980. So really close to 81. But yeah, the thing that I remember most about Flash Gordon from 1980 was it looked awful. The special effects were, you know, Star Wars was already out and Flash Gordon felt like it was decades behind in uh, its execution. Heck, Clash of the Titans came out right around that time. And that one felt decades ahead of Flash Gordon to me. (laughs) But Flash Gordon was a big thing back in the day. You know, it was one of those serials that everybody loved. I mean, Flash Gordon is what George Lucas was looking back to and remembering fondly and deciding to make Star Wars uh, with. So it seems like an obvious thing that could be made right after Star Wars comes out, but eh, it turned out poorly. Is there a way to make Flash Gordon? I haven't seen it in 30 years, so I don't remember a thing about it, to tell you the truth, other than how bad these special effects looked. Do you? Do you remember it? You? I, I don't know anything about Flash Gordon. I, I've never seen it. Yeah. But... That doesn't mean that I wouldn't go see a Flash Gordon movie. I, Sci-Fi Channel did a Flash Gordon series just a few years ago. Oh, really? And I was like, oh, I'll check that out. That sounds cool. And I looked. It was canceled after 10 episodes. Uh-huh. They didn't even air like the last three because it was so bad. And I was just like, oh, that's too bad. Because I think it has potential to be super fun in the same vein as Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. But, but, you know, it is science fiction and that always costs a lot of money. If if there would be a way to make it on a responsible budget, there's no reason why you couldn't have a successful Flash Gordon franchise. I guess the 1980 movie, its campiness has not helped keep Flash Gordon <laughs> in the mind of the culture in a positive way, you know what I mean? It's considered kitschy and stupid and embarrassing and all that stuff because of it but you know there was a reason that generations before ours loved that character and that that's what george lucas wanted to make if whoever it was paramount or 20th century fox had gone ahead and let george make his flash gordon movie then we would still be talking about how great flash gordon is uh that that (laughs) didn't happen i mean we have star wars because of that, because of Flash Gordon. And yeah, I think you can fix that. It's just, you need somebody who cares, who has the right take and can do a, a Spielbergian adventure film with it, you know, rollicking fun. And, and I don't know if somebody is willing to risk. I mean, even if it was like a $50 million budget, that's still $50 million you might not get back. Yeah, that's true. On the same vein, Buck Rogers in the 25th century. I, I, I don't know. Did you watch that show when you were a kid? I did. I thought it was great. I thought it was really, really cool. And Yeah, I liked it a lot. It, I, I think it has a better... Uh, people remember Buck Rogers a little bit better than they remember the Flash Gordon movie. But still, I don't know that anybody has done anything with Buck Rogers since then or or even attempted to. Actually, the Looney Tunes are going to do a Duck Dodgers feature film. So <laughs> They should have done that already. That should have been done as a feature film long ago. It's weird that that, that wasn't. Oh, wait, no. They've taken it off the schedule and instead they're doing a Space Jam 2 with lebron james they've been threatening that for years i I don't think that's ever going to happen if it were going to happen (laughs) it would have happened i remember them talking about doing it It it's like well let's do space jam with a different sport because there's never going to be somebody like michael jordan again let's go hey maybe tiger woods would do a space jam you know that kind of thing and and that didn't happen either I, i i i don't know that you can fix space jam It was a a once-in-a-lifetime thing, (laughs) and it wasn't that successful, but it had rewatch value, and people love it now. So it's one of those that at the time, it's kind of like Highlander. Highlander was a huge bomb, dude. I think Highlander made like $8 million worldwide, or maybe it was $12 million, (laughs) but 
people watched the hell out of those video cassettes and loved it and and so yeah it's i think space jam is like that I, yeah but yeah I, you can't do space jam again and do you remember how much money they spent on the animation of that movie it was so beautiful the animation that just yeah it was it was like roger rabbit uh level of uh shading and and highlighting and all that kind of stuff it was uh, it was impressive all right. I guess I don't need to ask if they if Battlestar Galactica can be saved because they already did that. So we we're finished with all of those uh shows from that time period. So I guess we've made it to the end of our can we fix it episode part 2. Enough time has probably passed for Battlestar Galactica for people to start talking about rebooting it. Yeah, they need to make a feature film of it now, huh? I, dude, that could work. I would never have guessed that the miniseries could have worked as well as it did. But just because, you know, it was Battlestar Galactica was on par with Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers. And yet, that show was acclaimed. People loved it. You and I spent hours talking about every episode. You find somebody that cares. But, you know, this is a blanket rule. You find somebody that cares that much about anything. And you can make a go at it. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely true. If you got the passion, you can make it work. It doesn't always mean people will show up to watch it, but it will mean that you uh, make something great. That maybe eventually they'll watch the hell out of the video cassettes or something like that, and it'll it'll turn out successful in the end, possibly. Who knows? All right. We've been going for more than an hour, so I'm going to let everybody go their own ways, and uh, we'll see you again next time. Thanks for listening and sticking around with us. If you have a franchise that you'd like to uh, discuss, can it be fixed, throw it out there in the comments uh, or on the forum, Facebook or whatever. It'd be fun to keep the conversation going. And uh, yeah, I've been Big Anklevich. Thanks for listening. Uh, I've also been Rich Outfield. And and he's right. Thanks for listening. <laughs> See ya. I think it would be fair to say I like that gets my goat from the start. It had a quiet way about it. A way of walking and talking under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. That's no derivatives to you. You could listen and share it all you like. But you couldn't sell it, claim it, or trade it for a bag of reefer, if that's your thing. Give it a good review over on iTunes. Somebody always breaks down crying. Happens every time. You're damn right. I pressed the button. You're listening to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine.